Welcome to another week of Unfiltered. And once again, I have shown up here in the studio on Tuesday morning, totally unprepared. <laughs> we'll just see where it goes, all right? Uh, so, uh, first of all, I meant to bring the book in on this too. Um, the air show community lost another, another one of its staples this past week. Uh, Dan Buchanan. He was, I, I believe, he's a paraplegic, and he is a uh, hang glider. He used to fly a, a great hang glider routine uh, with a with another plane circling around him as he flew his hang glider. Um, great, wonderful show. Um, I'm not sure on the specifics of the accident. It happened, I believe, out in, uh, out west at an air show. And, uh, to the Buchanan family, my condolences. Um, Dan will be sorely missed in the, in the air show, in the air show circuit. Uh, so, another loss closer to home. Swansea firefighter, uh, I can't remember his first name, Tatro. Uh, believe being laid to rest this week. He uh, was killed during a, a diving accident off the coast of Gloucester. Family in Swansea, he was, I believe, a lieutenant in the Swansea Fire Department. Um, and again, you know, these small town fire departments are all volunteer. and. You know, when you lose a member, that hurts. That really hurts. Um, so, uh, Mr. Tatro, uh, rest in peace, sir. And uh, to the Tatro family, again, condolences, prayers, um, and, uh, and thank you for your sacrifice. Um, because as a firefighter, you know, he defended this country, um, you know, from fire. So anyway, sad news. I, I don't want to dwell on that because, you know, uh, life continues. And, um, you know, mourning is, is uh, you know, for those that are left behind, um, for those of us still here on Earth, um, I don't know. Let's get to some some local stuff, and for this, uh, of course, <laughs> you know what's coming. Let's go over to the rant cam. Yes. So, <laughs> what are we going to talk about this week? Uh, unfiltered. Why don't we start with the with a local issue? Uh, a huge controversy. Uh, controversy uh, in the town where I live in Keene, New Hampshire. Um, crosswalks. That's right. Safety or aesthetics? That's the question. <laughs> if you're looking for aesthetics, I say go for them big overpass crosswalks. Yes. Yes, nothing cooler in a city than them big bridges up over the, over the street. And then people can stand up there and look out at the beautiful town and spit on cars and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, we've got a couple of bridges we don't even use right now. You know, the North Bridge and the South Bridge or whatever the hell that other one was called um, that I still haven't seen, you know. I don't think in, in the years that the North Bridge has been, been put up, I don't think I've seen a dozen people on there. In all of my trips underneath that thing, I don't think I've ever seen anybody on that bridge. Maybe they come and go under this darkness of night. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't see them. So again, all that money is spent um, for the aesthetic sidewalks, you know? Or for the aesthetic bridges, you know? The, oh, they look pretty coming into town. They look like rusty old railroad bridges. That's what they look like. 
Most towns are tearing crap like that out. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, and, and let's get back to the sidewalks because I don't want to stray off topic here because this is a very important and serious conversation that our town is having. <laughs> yes, it's, it's come down to that. <laughs> No other problems worth dealing with except this damn crosswalk thing. So, now, uh, Danny Mitchell on, on WKBK, he's been spouting off about it in the morning. He had the mayor on uh, yesterday talking about it. Uh, and, and, you know, I thought, Danny, you did a great show yesterday, brother. You... you there weren't any softballs, uh, melon balls, pickle balls, nothing thrown yesterday. You were burning them in, brother. And I like it. That's, that's the way that somebody needs to talk to these people who are in power. And uh, the fact was made um, about the lighting. Now, I believe last week or the week before, uh, one past week here in Unfiltered, I talked about the lighting on Main Street and how horrible it is at night. And it's not just the fact that the lights are stupid, but there's too many trees creating shadows. That's what it is. So Danny mentioned the lighting thing. Uh, the mayor said there's going to be some, some temporary lighting improvements down through the downtown area. That, yeah, you heard right. Temporary lighting. Temporary. That means not permanent for, for any of you college graduates out there. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, anyway, Danny asked, how come temporary lighting? And the mayor says, well, because we're going to completely redo Main Street in a couple of years. The mayor actually said, because we're going to tear up all of Main Street uh, in a couple of years. Uh, but that's not really what he meant. That's a figure of speech. You know, and for, the, for you people that don't understand, you know, other people talking, you know, don't take everything so literally. You know, what the mayor meant was, and I'm not defending the mayor by any reason, you know, he may be my opponent very soon. <laughs> I, may, I, may, I may try it again. Uh, again, five bucks. So, where the hell was I? Oh, the lighting, yeah. What the mayor was referring to with, with the tearing up of Main Street was the fact that um, the whole downtown revitalization project you know, and process it. It's going on right now, and they, they're trying to figure out, you know, what we want to be. Our illustrious mayor believes that we should be a world-class city, whatever that means. You know, we have barely made it out of small town status. And, and, and I thought that that's what we were shooting for was that small town um, community feeling. But apparently not. Apparently the mayor wants a nice world-class city like Detroit or Chicago, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's what we need. So... Anyway, getting back to the, to the lighting thing and, and Danny's conversation with, with the mayor on Monday morning. Uh, when the mayor said temporary lighting fixtures because we were going to tear up all of Main Street, uh, Danny said, and then get this, I, Danny, I love this. Uh, you are the man. Danny said, well, then why are we putting expensive crosswalks in if we're just going to tear them up in a couple of years? Mm -hmm. That's right. The little radio guy had a point. <laughs> yes. And I don't think it's a detriment to call him the little radio guy, because if you know him, 
He's on the small side. Um, so I love that. You know, and he made a, a beautiful point. If we're going to reconstruct all that anyway, why are we doing that? And then again, this morning, Tuesday morning, because I taped the show on Tuesday mornings um, while nothing's going on in the studio. So Tuesday morning, uh, there was talk about uh, aesthetics. You know, it's the safety versus aesthetics. The mayor wants these, these uh, nice, beautiful, brick red, uh, ugly red kind of dirty looking uh, acrylic stamped so it looks like bricks. I don't know what the damn fascination with bricks is in this town. But that's what he wants. It costs a crap load. Maintenance is low, though, apparently, um, except where the tire tracks go. Uh, as opposed to painting, it's, uh, you know, the maintenance is, is less than half the cost of, of painted stuff. But it initial cost to put them in is like four or five, six, eight times more than just painted crosswalks. The mayor thinks that white crosswalks are ugly. I don't know. Maybe it's a race thing. A diversity thing. I don't know what it is. The mayor of white crosswalks, you gotta be kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Danny says, well, you know, most places in the country have white crosswalks. And the mayor denied that fact. Um, so he is a, a, apparently the mayor is a crosswalk denier. Um, which, a white crosswalk denier, I should say. So, yeah, maybe we hold him accountable. Uh, personally, uh, when you talk about world-class cities, may, is London a world-class city? Because look at the Abbey Road, the Beatles Abbey Road cover. Crosswalks in London are white. I've been to Italy. Crosswalks in Italy are white. I've been to Spain. I don't even think Spain has crosswalks. People just take their chances. And friggin' people over in those, in Italy and Spain are crazy drivers. They don't even put brakes in those cars, I don't think. We took a taxi cab. We got off the, off the ship in Naples one, one time and jumped in a taxi cab to go to a bar. And this guy was just friggin' nuts. He got one hand out the window with the middle finger up, screaming and yelling, and his foot on the floor. His right foot on the floor. Weaving in and out of stuff. <sighs> yeah. And it's not the driver's responsibility for pedestrian safety. Pedestrian safety is just what it says. It's on the pedestrian. You look both ways before you cross the street. I learned that before I went to kindergarten. Do parents not teach that anymore? So you leave it up to the drivers who are trying to look for a parking space, find the damn store that they want, looking through all the trees, and watch all the other traffic that they've also got to watch for some idiot looking at his phone, stepping out in the middle of traffic. It's common sense. A person is fragile, weighs 300, I mean, if they're out walking around, probably less than 300 pounds. And a car weighs thousands of pounds. You wouldn't run out in front of a stampede of, of friggin' bulls, would you? No, but you think nothing is stepping out in the middle of traffic. And you don't even realize you're stepping out in front of traffic because you're not even 
paying attention to what you're doing, which is walking. The same thing goes with driving. If you're walking someplace, you pay attention to what's around you. Don't be absorbed in your phone or your headphones or wherever you are. Take the headphones out. You need to be able to hear as well as see when you're walking. Yes, pedest pedestrian safety has as much to do with pedestrians as it does with drivers. Yeah, how about, here's an idea. How about if crosswalks had little gates that came down like railroad tracks? Not for the cars, for the people. And you stand there at the gate and you wait and when the gate goes up, you cross. How about that? It's probably pretty expensive. But hey, we're talking safety here. Can you, can you put a price on safety? <laughs> There's nothing aesthetic about safety. Otherwise, firefighters would be much better dressed. They wouldn't have those big old baggy uniforms and have big, super ugly helmets. Uh, you know, they would be sharp dressed men. But that's not practical and that's not safe. Fire gear is designed for safety, not for aesthetics. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> So, hey, look, another thing that Danny was talking about uh, this morning was, was the fact that uh, the aesthetics of those big green boxes and big green bike lanes uh, that are all painted. And, you know, as long as you paint them every other week, they, they look beautiful, but, you know, a little bit of dirt and a little bit of rubber gets on them and they look like crap. They start wearing off. Uh, so what ran through my mind, I didn't want to call and, and start any hype, um, you know, unless I did it right here on my show, was uh, how long before the mayor suggests that we make all that green stuff acrylic too? Yeah, and, and hell, why not? You know, it's only money. <laughs> it's only money. There's, them city people, it's only money. It's only money. You know? The college has given us $120,000. Well, guess what? Why don't you send everybody a check? You know, why don't you send all the property owners a friggin' check? I don't care if, if it's for a dollar each. You know? Give some money back to the damn taxpayers. Don't just buy more granite curbs. Again, granite curbs are the, the, I have never ever gone into a city and said, looked around and said, I'll never come back to this city because they got white crosswalks and granite curbs. Or, uh, you know, they've got white crosswalks and asphalt curbs. Never come back here again. How dare they have asphalt curbs and white crosswalks. People don't say that. People, people have never made a decision on, on where to shop or, or where to open a business on the basis of what color the damn sun, crosswalks are. You know, when they redid Main Street back in the 80s, they did uh, all down, like Lower Main Street in front of, uh, you know, from Eagle Court all the way up through. And they did, uh, when they did all the bump outs, they added that pressed concrete brick, you know, so it looked like brick and then painted them all green. Painted, you know, some of the sidewalk gray, some of the sidewalk green, some of the sidewalk gray, some of the sidewalk green. 
Again, it's a friggin' sidewalk, for God's sakes. If we spent half as much money at Wheelock Park as we did in downtown, we would have a world-class campground. And world-class horseshoe pits. And world-class softball fields. We used to have huge horseshoe tournaments. You know, people would come from all over the United States to pitch horseshoes right here at Wheelock Park. And they would stay in the campground and overflow, um, I think would be, they'd have campers parked out in the, the backfield over there, uh, you know, where the soccer fields are now. Um, and people would come for that. But the problem is, is we funneled our money into downtown instead of upkeep on the facilities out there where people, you know, where it drew in three, four hundred people for a weekend, or five hundred, six hundred, whatever the horseshoe tournaments drew in. But it was a lot. And camping chapters would come here, you know, camping groups would come here, and, and Wheelock Park was filled up almost all the time out there in that campground. And no, I don't believe that you need full service, big concrete pads with sewer and 50 amp electricity in every campground. That's not what it takes to be a world-class campground. We can have a nice tenting campground. You know, small campers and tents. People, there are some people that still camp that way. Believe me. Uh, all right, I think that's enough about, about crosswalks. Um, look, paint them white. It's cheap. It's, it's job security because the guys, you know, have to keep going back and doing it once a year or once every six months. Light the crosswalks. That's all you got to do. Light those crosswalk areas so that you can see people at night, even if they're wearing black clothes. Um, but again, the white for contrast, when you've got legs walking in front of that white or across that white, those white stripes, you can see that there's oh, a patch of black just crossed there. So, uh, all right. Uh, let me get into real quick. Uh, the teachers are doing a walk-in because they don't have a contract. Uh, again, this is one of those, one of those uh, professional choice things that you make in your life when you decide what you want to do for a living. And here's the real question to the teachers. Is it more important for you that students get an education or that you get rich? You know, it's the same thing with the doctors. You know, if you become a doctor, I mean, what's the reason you become a doctor? Is the reason you become a doctor because you want to have lots and lots of money and a big house and a boat and everything else? Or do you become a doctor because you want to help people? You want to make a ton of money, forget college. College will put you in debt. You want to make a ton of money, go to a quick tech school or, or get a job as a as a plumber's apprentice or in a trade because those guys make a crap load of money and they don't start life $200,000 in debt. That's all I'm saying. We make the choices as to what we're going to do for a profession. You can't get into a profession and then say they don't pay me enough money for this. Because when you made the decision to become a teacher, you knew the teachers are among the lowest paid people in the country. I mean, what's next? Maybe, maybe we get illegal immigrants to come in and be teachers? 
do the jobs that Americans don't want to do anymore? Suck it up. You know? School, school district gives benefits. I mean, there's health packages. I, I mean, I don't have a health package. I don't have a retirement plan, no 401, none of that stuff. I've got a job. And when I do my job and work, I get money. When I don't do my job, I don't get money. That's the simple fact of life. So, I don't know. I don't know what to do. We could pay the teachers a million dollars each. But then guess what? It's going right back on the taxes. We have to figure out what's important, folks. You know? Is it money? Or is it doing the right thing? Most people think it's about the money. So, we'll see. I don't know. Anyway, we're coming up on a minute. So let's uh, zip back over here to this camera over here. And uh, queue up my credits. And... Uh, chat for for another minute or so because the credits will take probably a minute to load up this computer has been acting real slow and and jerky lately so uh uh headed out on uh early 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 saturday morning to head down to rhode island quonset rhode island for the uh rhode island national guard uh open house and air show blue angels will be performing um should be a great day I uh, plan to get there again real early to beat the traffic and, uh, you know, be there all day. Hanging in the sun, supposed to be a nice day. And Blue Angels uh, F-16 demo team will be there, so I'll get to see uh, Major Rainwaters again. Um, I'll get to see a few of my photographer buddies uh, from the circuit. And uh, all in all, it's, I plan to have a great day. Sunday, I think I'm going to probably cancel Sunday's trip down because uh, weather report says it's going to be kind of uh, rainy. So, hey, that's all my time for this week. Until next week, I'm Rick Blood. This is Unfiltered. Peace.